Hey guys, what is happening in Iceland, specifically on the Reykjanes Peninsula, where we currently have an eruption going, while we also have a magma chamber filling up to the point of maximum elasticity and the land is rising there, a very, very unique phenomenon that hasn't been seen in Iceland before and not, also not, all over the world. So this is something very interesting. So we are expecting an eruption or intrusion like any minute. And uh, it seems something's catching up there, but not only on the Reykjanes Peninsula, it seems like all over the place in Iceland. And scientists said last week that they're concerned about the rise in seismic activity all over Iceland. So the activity that we see around this eruption area has increased on May 3rd, but it, then it has slowed down a little bit today, but we have to see what the day brings. But definitely we could see that up to late May 3rd, like Friday, the increase in earthquake activity on the Reykjanes Peninsula has happened, and that's why the tensions are rising. The earthquake activity is like slowly but steadily increasing on the Reykjanes Peninsula. That is an indication that something in the ground, that there's tension in the ground that, that are increasing and they're probably triggered by the ongoing land rise that is happening under Swartzangi, where the power plant is located and the Blue Lagoon. So what is happening there? There's a magma chamber underneath Swartzangi at a depth of roughly four kilometers, and that is filling up with magma again. And when it has reached the point of maximum elasticity, it sends magma on its way to trigger an eruption or an intrusion. And we see here in that graph what has happened in the past since November 10th. So when we are at a level between 8 million and 13 million cubic meters in that magma chamber, something has happened. More eruptions than intrusions as you can see here in the graphic. So we have, I think, about 11 million cubic meters in that magma chamber right now. So that's why they're expecting either the current eruption to increase significantly or that there's new fissures opening or a second eruption somewhere else. But one thing is definitely for sure, Grindavik will be in trouble. Grindavik will be in trouble because the lava carpet that is already there by the previous eruptions and especially by the current eruption that has been going on since March 16th, the lava has built up on top of each other. So like a little bit of a monster that is threatening Grindavik, it has built up in height and is now four meters 12 feet higher than the defense walls in Grindavik. And that's why it has already breached the defense wall in Grindavik. Right now, there's like underground lava tunnels that are pushing that and lifting up the lava. So it's not flowing super fast. But what's the problem for Grindavik is if that new event is happening and let's say from the current eruption, it pushes out really a lot of additional magma, then we have a fast liquid lava flow again and that will flow south towards Grindavik. And since it's already higher, the defense wall is here, the lava carpet is here, it can flow down into Grindavik pretty, pretty great. So that's why the authorities have said, well, can we please get the go to do something with the defense walls. I mean, they're already working on the walls 24 seven, but there were plans in the drawers to build additional defense walls closer to Grindavik. So we have the outer defense walls and then maybe build more defense walls because if the one is breached, there's a second one. Of course, that costs a lot of money. So decisions have to be made. They say usually the bureaucratic process to give it a go is quite fast, but it looks like they will definitely not be ready with anything for the event that we're expecting like any second right now. And this event will also come with little to no warning. It will come as a surprise because there's already so many tunnels and areas where the magma can flow. It doesn't need to grind a new tunnel to get to where it wants to go. So there won't be many earthquakes because it's not grinding through the crust. It has tunnels away, um, already ready where it can flow. So Grindavik is not out of the woods and uh, it doesn't seem that it will be anytime soon. So that's what has to be monitored. 
So what it looked like on Friday that the current eruption did intensify a little bit. So maybe there is already some magma coming out from the magma chamber. We don't know. And also they said just yesterday or the day before yesterday that they think the land rise underneath short Sankey is slowing down. It's stopping. That could always be an indication that the maximum elasticity is reached. Like with my rubber band here, I can stretch it, I can stretch it, and then it reaches the point where I cannot stretch it any further. And if I then keep pulling, which I'm not, it'll break. And that's the same thing. Breaking means sent the magma on its way. So they were wrong. The land rise did not stop. It still keeps gradually going. So it's still filling up with even more magma. So it seems it does not have... The, the maximum level in it yet, but it could at any moment. It's a lot of magma in there already. We also had from the current crater, there was a small lava flow breaking through of the edges of that crater. And that was happening during the night and it has made its way to the western base of the crater cone, but it was only a small amount, um, you could only see a small amount on the surface, but the lava still flows through underground tunnels towards Grindavik so that the lava field near the crater and towards Grindavik becomes even thicker and higher because it's filling up the whole thing from below. And uh, there is a new sentinel image that shows that there is the thermal radiation that comes from the surface of that lava, that, that lava carpet that is near the dam of northern Grindavik, that there is some thermal radiation. So there is some heat and that's an indicator. Yes, there is still this underground lava tunnel that's flowing towards the defense walls and towards Grindavik. And um, if you look at the earthquake activity, basically in the whole country, um, you can see that there is increased earthquake activity in the Vatnajökull area, for example. The Icelandic Met Office has just within the last 48 hours detected 180 earthquakes beneath the whole country, beneath all of Iceland, but 121 of these tremors occurred on the Reykjanes Peninsula or near the Reykjanes Peninsula. And many of these areas were in the area of that magma tunnel and the Sutnuka Crater series, but also there were frequent earthquakes in the fissure systems of Fagradalsfjall and Krizovik. And Krizovik is not a nice one because that has shown in the past that it has flown in to like the area where we now see the suburbs of Reykjavik. So this system is also a threat, not to Grindavik, but to Reykjavik. Um, and some of these tremors had like the, a range of in the magnitude too. So not super, super small. That's why it's not only the number of earthquakes is increasing, but it seems also the strength of these earthquakes is increasing. And what that means, we will have to wait and see. Nobody can tell for sure. We know that Iceland is on a rift zone, the North Atlantic Ridge, where the two tectonic plates are moving away from each other, opening a space for magma from below to be able to come to the surface. So we know the Reykjanes Peninsula did wake up from an 800 year sleep. So nothing, not much has happened for 800 years until 2021 when we saw the Fagradalsfjall eruptions. And of course, now this is more um, known or in the news because it really has affected the town of Grindavik very, very badly. Over 172 days have passed since the residents have been evacuated first. And so they have to see what's the future of the town. The homes are being bought out from the residents. The businesses are not really happy. They're meeting on a regular base. They're forming groups now to see what they can do to stay alive.
So I will keep you updated about this as well, guys. This was a quick update. Check my other update about the Huang volcano. It's here in the end screen. That's an interesting one. And check out my videos about the monster volcano Vesuvius and the super volcano Campi Fligri in Italy because it's rumbling a lot there. So interesting stuff, guys. Stay tuned. For the ones that are new here, please subscribe. I'd love to see you again. And guys, to all of you, thank you so much for buying me the coffees on my buy me a coffee site and many have asked me you're mentioning that site where is it the link is in the description of this video it's buymeacoffee.com slash silky so thanks for that guys thanks for your supers and for your ongoing support for this channel it, it really means a lot guys and i hope to see you soon with the next update bye bye